Hello, and welcome everybody uh, to yet another beautiful music production live stream. Today is Wednesday, the 29th of July 2020. I am Felix Rösch, Berlin-based composer, mining the edges of electronic, ambient and classical music for more than 10 years now. And on this channel and on these streams in particular, you will find a very small and beautiful audience, which is already in chat, um, and a community of music makers. Um, who, uh, yeah, we're, you know, sharing our stories, uh, always learning new stuff together while I'm kind of live streaming all my music making sessions. Uh, I do this three times a week. Uh, the streaming description, uh, streaming schedule is still a little, uh, still a little bit early. <laughs> streaming uh, schedule for that is in the description of this video. If you would like to join, just say hi in chat. Um, I read out every message and reply to every comment. Also, people in chat are really um, friendly and all musicians and would love to talk to you probably uh pretty sure um yeah also release uh videos on different gear and on music production techniques and all sorts of stuff like that so if you're interested in any of that uh so, so we'll consider subscribing because that way you won't miss any of it um yeah luke swain still our latest subscriber i think we've lost one subscriber over uh, the night that happens right that's okay um yeah, and we're, today we'll get into continuing working on this track that is playing in the background. Um, yesterday, when uh, we, we finished the stream, I wasn't really too happy with it. Right now I'm feeling like it's maybe a little bit better. Um, yeah, uh, first of all, Cal. Hello, Cal. Uh, nice to see you, Mixing Scholar. Um, Cal writes, hey, hello to you. Uh, Mixing Scholar says, hey, everyone. Uh, and he, uh, Mixing Scholar also says, um, do you already have plans after this EP or do you just focus on one thing at a time? Um, I'm thinking, not really, you know, there are a couple of things I would like to do. Uh, one thing is finish a um, string quartet. I'm not sure how interesting this is because it's really much more focused on, at least in the first part, it's much more focused on just classical working in a score um, and on the piano, but maybe I might stream that as well. Um, but yeah, there, there are so so many things, <laughs> so many things uh, we could do. Um, yeah, but right now I like to, f at least for, um, you know, if I probably if I wasn't live streaming this, I would probably do it much like, like work here a little and then work there a little and then this and this and just, but with these streams, I feel like it's, it helps me and it helps uh, the people watching this if I'm just working on, you know, one one thing. I don't know. Maybe I will change this at some point. But yeah. Um, oh, and hey, everybody, thank you for the likes. Um, I already see a couple of likes coming in. Um, thank you a lot. Um, because in case you don't know this, I mean, these streams, like the last one got like 13 plays or something. And if out of 13 uh, plays, like five people like it that helps me a lot with the youtube algorithm all i'm saying is if you would like to support me just a little bit hit that like button thank you now um let us begin so yesterday um at the end of the stream i started to record you know just some some bits and pieces that were or basically two takes of what we had so far so the basic, um, well, let me just skip ahead a little bit here. The basic motive I liked a lot. Um, I, by, by the way, how are you, everybody? Um, Carl, Carl, what, what's what's going on with you? How's the mixing going? And mixing scholar, what's going on with you? How are you on this wonderful Wednesday morning? something I forgot oh oh you know what mixing scholar I think this was your idea right to, to use a beat what I just felt was um, just by accident what might work actually is to have the beginning do some kind of pling 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 like this and then pretty fast this piano thing will appear 
So this is the A part. This will basically become some kind of rondo where it's just A, B, A, C, A, D. So it always returns to this A. And here I fit this. So the first B part introduces... Now this is incredibly off grid. But I like it. Like, I mean, you know, it just is there and then... So, that's good. I think that's good, you know, if it just introduces, uh, if, if we introduce the drums like this. Now we already created something on this in these first five minutes. Isn't that great? Um, Cal writes, would you rather have one million casual followers that listen to your music every now and then? Or 100 diehard fans that would consume everything you make? Um, make all the time I was thinking about this. Um... And Mixing Scholar says, probably 100 super fans. Yeah, I think I'd agree. Uh, to be honest, I only do this for the music. Everything else is second place. Yeah, um, I mean, that's that's a very extreme uh, example, right? Because, I mean, I think... It also depends if, if you want to make a living off of this or not. Um, so if you have one million people listening casually on Spotify, that would be probably like 1.6 million streams on Spotify alone and that would make a living. You could make a living off of this. Um, with 100 diehard fans, I'm not sure you know, if they are able already willing to spend like 10 to 15 euros every month buying your music and buying your stuff. Um, so, you know, let, let's assume both uh, both categories are um, equally uh, sustainable in a, in a, in a um, financial way. Um, I would definitely have, would love to have 100 diehard fans instead of 1 million streams. Um, yeah, but this is very, a uh, lot of conjunctiv, uh, you would say in German. Uh, conjunctiv, what's conjunctiv? We are learning so much on this stream. Basically the if. Conjunctive, 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 whatever. I hope you know what I mean. Um, and, you know, because, uh, yeah, it's. It, I'm also doing this for people listening to this, actually. Um, and I think this is difficult, but I felt like, um, and I would love, love it to be more like, I'm just doing this for myself, um, but I felt like I want to have an audience and want to have people. So if it's 100 people, that's perfect, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, Mixing Scholar says it's like subscribing to a YouTube channel and never w watch the videos. What's the point? Um, yeah. Uh, the fans would buy merch as well. Yeah. I. I, I no, I, I think... Yeah, yeah, I think I think that you're right. I think you're right. I was just thinking about both cases. Um, and you know what, also... Um, uh, Cal writes, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and you know what also thing helps me is... Um, you know, I, I randomly get emails from people who have been to, to uh, some theater shows or have listened to some uh, film score or um, um, uh, audiobook soundtrack I wrote. And who are like, oh, this is so beautiful. Thank you for doing this. Um, you know, without any, any strings attached, just you know, wanting to express how much they like the music. And that really feels good. You no, know, it's good to have an audience. That's what I'm saying. And good to have, to know that you're not doing this in a complete vacuum. But you know what? I like this, these drums here. Let's see, I mean, this is completely, you know, the, the what I've been playing here. The piano is off-grid. It's, and the, the beat is obviously quantized, so... It's really not at all in sync. I kind of like this. 
it's still in sync enough to get an idea how this could work. Yeah, I think, you know, in the end I want to have people who are willing to go to a concert when I'm... when I will ever... if there will ever be a time when I will play live again. And maybe buy some merch or, you know, show up on... on, on live streams. I mean, no, this is more like a, a musician live stream where we're you know we're exchanging ideas and then working kind of what kind of working together and brainstorming so this is more of a um, production focused live stream rather than you know a music performance live stream but hey mystical physics uh just appeared in chat hi guys uh he writes hi guys hello to you beautiful that you're here how's the studio build going Now, uh, Mystical Physics, just to keep you up to speed, we are um, up to speed. I don't know if this is a phrase from the 70s. I don't, I don't care. I like it. Um, we're working on this idea here, this one, which is from a stream on... That's the whole idea. Um, and yeah, we're trying to develop this. And Mystical and uh, Mixing Scholar had a great idea to, to you know, um, use some kind of beat. So we've built this, which right now is really, really off grid. Um, but I feel like this might work. And yeah, so we're, um, um, we're kind of trying to put this together and it will basically be a rondo so a b a c a d always returning to this with some variations um <laughs> mixing scholar writes uh, at mystical physics yo uh and it continues uh, what's your greatest moment since you've been making music oh there are some there are some uh, mine was when I finally played my first gig. It was only a pub, but it was cool. That's good. Um, and I, I bet you were pretty nervous. Um, yeah, you know, um, there, there are so many moments. I've been playing in a in a band when I was like, <clears throat> you know, from 16 to 20, 22 maybe. Um, and there are many great memories from playing with them, rehearsing with them, drinking lots of alcohol in the rehearsal room and just, you know, crying over all sorts of stuff. Um, and yeah, like, really awesome moments playing live. And it's still when I hear our strong songs, I'm still, yeah, although it's really not that good. Uh, um, so there are quite some moments there. Um, um, yeah, and then, you know, all the, um, in the past, there were always when I've been working with, with great ensembles, um, like the uh, Western German Radio Symphony Orchestra, where we had a huge symphony hall, orchestral symphony hall, uh, the, the Philharmonic uh, in Cologne, and we're recording for four or five days with one of the best orchestras in Germany, playing my music. Um, that was pretty awesome. Like, I mean, it also hurt a lot because some of the parts of the scores didn't really work the way I wanted them to. And I knew this was not because they could not play this. That was because I wrote some not so well orchestrated music in some parts. But some other parts were really beautiful. Um, and oh, uh, yeah, there was one moment when I was working with uh, the... Um, um, with the choir from the Western German radio and they were you know singing a piece I I didn't know if this would work actually it was with lots of glissandi and kind of, it, it's kind of a beautiful piece I like it a lot I can show you later um, and yeah, you know I was sitting in the room and I didn't, didn't know if this would work and as soon as they started to sing 
it was just beautiful. The, the singers looked at looked at me and were smiling, you know, at, like, and I was smiling, and the director was sitting there and smiling. So it, uh, it was, you know, the, these are the moments. Yeah, I look back to and uh, also when I discovered the the end to the By G Dolphin track, like the piano um, arpeggi and stuff like that. So these there are lots of these little moments uh, that in the end make all that um, stress and work and and fear of, of not being able to sustain living and all sorts of stuff like that uh, that make all of this worth it you know you have all these little moments that shine over all the rest so it's really not just one uh, one greatest moment I think and I think it would be really <laughs> I don't know, you need lots of these little moments to make it worthwhile, I think. Um, Cal um, says, do you watch any music channels on YouTube? Um, I like Rebecca Massad, great guitarist. No, Ra Rabea, oh, not Rebecca. Ra Rabea Massad. Um, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, right now it's mostly uh, focused on music promotion. Um, so not so much about music production or music composition, um, but yeah, you know, there's there's one one guy uh, Andrew South Southworth I think, who basically explains how he sets up his marketing campaigns uh, for music specifically, um, and I think you know he he does it quite well. Um, that's something I am watching right now, but. You know, Music wise, not so much anymore. Um, I did, I did a lot, um, you know, about especially about electronic music production. But there's lots of really crappy advice out there as well, <laughs> so you have to be careful. Um, and you can spend lots of time with this, um, not really working at all. So you now sometimes I figure it's it's good to have um, fixed time frame for consuming uh, tutorials and stuff like that and to use the rest of your time to actually make music so I don't want to discourage you from watching this live stream uh, I love to have you here but if you can also you know uh, make some time to make music that's uh, that helps with making music um, Mystical Physics writes, the studio is on hold at the minute. <clears throat> I've picked up a job uh, to pay the bills <laughs> and it's taking all my time. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how it is, right? Um, but you know, I figure, I mean, it's a little bit similar with me right now because, you know, I'm, my job right now is to raise my daughter. That's what's like 40, 50 hours every week. Um, what I do most of the time um, but I still find li little holes and you know um, I still make space to make music and that's really important I think so even if you can't spend eight hours ten hours every day if you can spend two or like 15 16 hours every week that's better than nothing <clears throat> You know, right now, for me, honestly, this is the, the amount of time I can spend on making music. Like, about 15 hours a week. <clears throat> hey, so what what type of job did you get? Uh, Mixing Scholar writes, um, if you could go back, uh, would you release music much earlier? Yes. <laughs> like, oh, um, like 20 years old, or do you think this was the best time for you? I think honestly right now is is a really good time um, because you have I mean yeah <clears throat> there, there are pros and cons to this of course but I feel like the the fact that the middleman like the record labels are basically cut out of the equation <laughs> because you can basically upload your stuff yourself um, and you can promote it yourself, um, or you have to promote it yourself, which... Oh, this is a faster version, I like this. Um, yeah, I feel like there, there's lots of possibility to um, really do all that stuff yourself. And 
that's like I said both a good and a bad thing but for me at least um, you know I don't feel like I have to go around looking for record labels and begging them to believe in my vision but but I can just you know do it myself and um, it kind of works you know I'm right now I'm getting some sync deals I'm getting some uh, Spotify ro royalties and It's, it's a long run it's it's a long long uh, long road ahead but um, you know I think it's there's not this one big bah moment where, where everything from that moment everything you know, starts but you, you can really work on it yourself and just do the, all these baby steps step by step by step and yeah um, you know I like it right now the way it is But I mean, honestly, I have um, I have these theater jobs um, and the, these uh, composition. Um oh, that was wrong. This, um yeah, no, I'm basically getting paid to be in a theater production every now and then, uh, and that's enough to make a living right now. So, you know, if I wasn't, I don't know, I don't know, it's really hard. Okay, uh, there's one thing I wanted to have a look at. And that is, wait, let me see. There was one part in the improvisation yesterday that was really good. And I wanted to find this. Um, and just have a short look at it because that was kind of good. Now what we are, um, what's this? Oh, that's such a bad improvisation. I know it becomes really classical. Okay, wait, let's stop this. I'm so sorry that we're now looking at a YouTube video on my live stream. like this when I watch this back but right now I'm not really sure anymore um, now let's look at the other part and if this is also not as good as I remembered it we'll just continue with what we have okay let's look at this I liked, yeah, yeah, I think I know what I mean. Inception. <laughs> Nixon Scholar writes Inception. That's, that's funny because. Uh, Cal writes, um, do you think you'll ever release stuff um, under another name? Maybe another genre or experimental stuff? Um, yeah, totally. Um, there's lots of stuff I would like to do. Um, I also have one a whole EP lying around, um, which is a little. Bit Wait, I can show you that. I haven't um, haven't really done anything with it really, uh, but it's basically mastered and finished, and it's just you know I just need to do some uh, need to do some promotion for it, and you know, but I didn't really find the time to do it. Wait. Uh, And that I, I wrote that when I just got the synthesizers. I'm looking for it right now. Ah oh, well, can't find it. But I basically wrote this when I um, got the synthesizers first time. <clears throat> um, yeah, and it's just it has been lying around there for two years, and I didn't do anything with it. And I just recently re rediscovered it and thought. Well, this isn't too bad because at the time I thought this was really bad and I wouldn't, or it didn't really fit what I was doing um, at that time. So um, yeah, I didn't didn't do anything else with it, and then I rediscovered it and thought, hey, this isn't too bad. Yeah, and mastered it. 
but didn't do anything else yet. So this will be released under another name um, because it kind of you know really differs from what I'm doing right now. Uh, more experimental stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, this right now is a little bit more poppy. But I kind of like it, you know? It's not like this feels wrong or anything. It feels pretty right. I like it. Okay, although this is really offbeat. Yeah, um... to do is synchronize the oh how can we do that um, because uh, right now here in the background although okay I know how we will do this in the background there's a loop playing and this is on the ditto looper on the piano um, there is a way to synchronize the ditto looper via MIDI clock I think mm, but Doing this on stream will really be not so entertaining and as well as not so much um, we won't have that as much as control as we would have when we just built this in a DAW. So maybe I'm thinking uh, we'll build this in a DAW so we'll just record some layers <coughs> and loop them which is fine I think. Um, and then we can also control the levels independently and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, Mixing Scholar writes, uh, I wish someone really rich uh, would make a terrible song and spend thousands on marketing just to see how far it can go. <laughs> That's pretty much what mainstream music is, uh, Cal writes. Um, yeah, you know, the thing is, it's never really the production most of the time is really good of these mainstream pop songs and um, music like composition wise it's just they're just doing things they know that work you know um, and there are some some songs of Ed Sheeran or, um, or Billie Eilish I really like because they, they are you know they are good musicians they actually know how to write music and yeah, but there's, uh, don't, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's lots of shit out there. Um, but it's well produced, and it resonates with a larger audience, who just, you know, sit in a car and drive home and can sing along, and, you know, next week there will be the next song, and that's fine. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to be this, this elitist, mm, this is bad. So, there, you know, there's, I think there's a point to all, all, every kind of music. And if people enjoy it, it's good. It's just not for me. Um, and that's fine as well. Um, you know, I think it's, it's really easy to get, become um, a little, uh, you know, uh, what's this uh, word? Like, um, it, it can be really frustrating. Um, to, to see how, how and bitter you can I think that's the word I think you can become really bitter at, at a point seeing that there's so much music you consider to be um, much worse like much less complex and simpler and, and just not really innovating in any way and just repeating stuff that has been there 30 years or 40 years already um, and this can become really you know, I don't know. This can become kind of like can really um, make you a bitter, bitter musician, just com complaining. <laughs> and I don't want to be that. And I also think it's wrong because I mean, there are people who like this music, who like their four chords and their generic uh, melodies and lyrics, and that's fine. You know, if they like it, great. Uh, I just, it's just not for me. Um, and I think, you know, um, approaching it this way is, is much healthier because yeah, it's just not, you no. Know, it's okay. I don't know if, if you know what I mean, but 
um, mixing scholar rights i'm struggling to think of things to write for my spotify bio <laughs> i know right it's really weird writing your own spotify bio uh, it's not made yet but i'm just planning it out um yeah you know what helped me was um, just to start writing and you know don't think about it too much and just write some paragraphs and that's it and then you know two days later look at it and you will be surprised at how good it is at least that i mean at how well it works already um at least that's the way it, it was for me so i just started writing just you know some things i knew okay i will have to correct this at some point like with these improvisations you know i know there's just 90 percent of it is just garbage and then when i listen to back to this later it's like maybe it's just 80 percent garbage so i don't know that, that helped me at least to just start writing uh play long tracks says uh hi all hello to you uh how's your day and he asks uh what do you think will be the defining genre of the 20s 20s uh 20s um so i think you're referring to the 2020s that's a good question i mean i think best case scenario is that there is no such thing anymore as a defining genre um you know, because it's it's so spread and scattered and everybody can you know with their own algorithm featured and fed uh spotify uh, release radar can basically find their own little niche um but i don't know 2020s in the 20s it's nice right we're in the 20s right now i don't know i'm also not really you know to put it in Jordan Klepper's words, I'm not really fingering the pulse of uh, of music, the mainstream music world uh, at the moment. I'm really just in in this little niche. Um, <laughs> Mixing scholar writes rock, I hope, but a new form of rock. Uh, yeah, I would be totally in for this. You know, my e guitars and my amplifiers here would love to. Uh, would love to be played again um i don't know i don't know um i think you would have to ask someone who's really into uh, like in touch with all the big labels and stuff like that but i'm really thinking it, the whole music industry has become much more diverse over the last 10 years um especially with streaming and you know my music is right next there to taylor swift's music so it, you know you can just decide what you want to hear of course like 99.9999999999 percent will listen to taylor swift's music um but all i'm saying is the all sorts of music is readily available for everyone and that I think changes um, how music is consumed and what is considered like a mainstream thing because I also think stuff like the Beatles and will not happen again anymore because um, the world is just too diverse and there, there are too many um, gatekeepers to, to really you know, have this one defining band or one defining sound I think but maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm wrong I don't know uh, Mixing Scholar says, uh, I don't think record labels can last. If you can write songs, know a bit about marketing, you don't need a record label. And I think they know this now. Yeah, I would agree, not, but not 100%, because um, what I feel like is, is labels still have, you know, they have the numbers of the people um, at Spotify and at Apple Music. Um, doing these uh, playlists and they call them regularly and saying hey we have a new release can you please check it out please um and there's still quite a lot of power these record these big record labels hold that's the first thing um and the second thing is 
um, and of course, you know, record label, the Spotify and all the streaming services depend on these big record labels because they have the music, you know, the, 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 which really brings the listeners. Um, and that's also why they have special deals for these record labels. That's why artists there get paid better than, you know, you and me on Spotify because it's not like they get more per play, but they get these, you know, extra little bonuses like they get some, you know, company stocks and or stuff like that so they get some extra money um, second thing is still even even if it's a small label that is really um, you know think of a label as a, as a as a group of like-minded musicians and people who you know, like to meet from time to time and exchange and that's uh, I think you know you can also say you just have a collective but then you're a label basically and a label can do marketing much better than I can do it, like most labels, I think, because there's there's a person who, d who does this full time and it's basically their job to do it. Um, and yeah, of course, I can set up a marketing campaign and I can do these photo shoots and I can do all that stuff you, you kind of that is expected from an audience. Um, but first of all, it takes a lot of time and that's time I would rather spend on writing music. Um, and yeah, all this stuff is done by a label. So if there was a label which was really invested in their artists and that was, you know, had all the connections to blogs and stuff like that, that's another thing. Uh, you know, when I was looking at blogs, I would like to send my music to. Uh, some of the bigger blogs said, hey, we don't take submissions. But, uh, you know, the, for all labels and um, people like that, um, just use our old ways of communicating so they had some emails probably in some contacts or you know, mails um, you know, phone numbers and stuff like that so these labels still have lots of yeah I think there's, there's still um, there's a good case to make for labels uh, Kel writes uh, or asks would you sign a record label deal if you got offered um, really depends on the deal and on the label because you know there are, I think there are many labels by the way I, I am on a label right now and that's me you know I have my own label um, releasing my music um, but you know it really depends if it's a label that that is interesting and with uh, an interesting rooster of artists um, I might seriously consider this depending on how much they take you know there are, there are some labels, especially with smaller artists, that take 70 or even more percentage of your revenue. Um, yeah, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. And they would have to work a lot to make this worthwhile, you know. So if I'm right now, let's say right now I'm getting like 100 euros every month. And if they would take 70% of that, I would be left with 30. But if they manage to, you know, um, increase my audience and do all the marketing stuff so that I wouldn't be getting 100, but 1,000, and they still took 70% of it, I would still be left with 300 euros. So I would go from 100 to 300. Um, and then it would be worth it again. But they would have to be able to scale um, my audience in a way that really, you know, matters. And that's difficult. I think there are lots of really poor labels out there who just say, yeah, we'll take you on and just take your money and really don't do a lot for you except for maybe writing a press release now and then and that's it. And yeah, I think you really have to be careful with that. Um, Mixing Scholar says, I guess it's a lot of work uh, if you are also making your own stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of work. I felt this with with this. I'm still feeling this with this release. You know, uh, I have to plan when I will make the video for this of the little um, video ads and stuff like that. And yeah, it's really a lot of work. Um, and yeah, it's a lot of work. And I would love, <laughs> would love if there was a label who would do that work for me and do it right. And they pro probably would also do it better because they are, they have this some kind of you know distance to my work and can see it from 
from a broader perspective. Um, okay, now, actually, listening back to this track here, I feel like this kind of works. It's a little bit too fast, maybe. Let's listen to the other version. you don't really get an ideal of course this and then with the second a part um, the kick drum will be there and it will be on time so that's a good thing um, you know what that's actually something we can record today so it will be a b a and then some some kind of B part and then, then some kind of C and D and so on. Um, yeah, but I kind of like it. Mm, mixing Scholar says, but it's a labor of love. Yes, yes, it is. Um, well, for me anyway, I don't ever feel like I'm working when playing music. Yes, it's uh, tiring, but it's, I enjoy it. Um, again, I would partly agree, partly, because, um, yes, it's a complete, I mean, no person in the right mind looking at the metrics and statistics of being an um, independent musician would actually do this. You know, the, it's not a rational, rational thing. Um, but there are points uh, when I'm like, well, I would rather like to sit on a couch and watch some Netflix or something um, instead of finishing this track here. Or, you know, especially when the track is not turn didn't turn out the way you wanted it to be, and you know, then you're thinking, ah, I don't want to finish it. But you still have to. Sometimes you have. All I'm saying is sometimes you have to push through uh, a valley of despair, uh, and that. These are the times when I feel like this this feels like work. This is, is work because, you know, uh, but it's really just um, the majority of the time is like, uh, like right now. And I'm basically just having fun doing what I was made to do. Um, yeah, but I, I think there are moments when you, when you will, um, um, at least when you're really doing this, Full time and seriously, I don't know if you are, but I think Mixing Scholar um, wasn't sure. Um, I mean, how much how much hours every day you spend doing this? But if you're spending like six, eight hours every day, maybe even more, um, there will be moments when you're like, ah, I want to do something else, like go for, go for, I don't know, uh, watch some. You know, I like to play StarCraft uh, or all these Blizzard games. And would or Overwatch or something like that. And there were days when I'm like, mm, oh, where? Right now, my daughter takes up all my time. But uh, before my daughter was born, you know, I was playing computer games, too, uh, at least too much. But because uh, yeah, I didn't really take this. There were, that's what I'm saying. There, there were moments when I felt like um, I would have to escape work a little bit. And music was kind of work as well, and that's fine. You know, that that's only a sign for you that you know you're serious about this, and you're really putting in the hours necessary to become really good at this and to make a living off of this. So, um, but yeah, but it's really if you're doing this eight hours every day. There will be moments when you have to just push through and then it will feel like work. That's good. That's a good thing. Uh, Cal writes, uh, how important do you think music theory is? 
Oh, and that's a good question. When writing songs, um, a lot of the great songwriters only have basic understanding. Yeah, I think like, um, I mean, you should. Honestly, I don't think it's important at all. Um, I mean, when the Beatles, for example, they didn't really know theory. They didn't really write their music down or anything. Um, but there are, I think there are two ways of knowing theory, of knowing stuff when, when, when it comes to music. Because one way of knowing it is, you know, if you can... There's a very deep-rooted understanding of music, which is not on a high um, intellectual level, which, which is most of the time enough to make beautiful songs, like basically the Beatles did. And if you listen to lots of music, and you have really digested all that music in your, you know, in your tummy, it's all there and you can just recreate it um, or, or use all that like a huge emotional library your fingers and your your ears and your your heart uh, no um that's enough that's more than enough and you don't have to learn any music theory you don't have to learn how to write sheet music or anything um having said that the, the classical music theory is a great tool for um, first of all explaining music that has been there um, especially I mean, I mean I'm, I'm coming from more of a classical angle so I've learned like classical music theory for years and this is great theory for um, first of all explaining music from Mozart and, and Bach and uh, Maybe even still like like Schumann and um, you know, the, but it always lagged behind. It was just just a way to explain what they did and why they did it, and it also could just explain like eighty percent of it. The rest was just some kind of genius combination, and that was what what made this music so special. So. I think music theory always fails at really explaining the core of why something is beautiful. It's just you know, describing describing a, a how something is built, like the, the outer outer rim of it, um, but um, like the core and why 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 a song is good and why certain combinations of rhythms are good. Um, and then again, what is good, right? Something that is good for me can be not good for other people. Um, it really really fails there and i feel like if you have a really <laughs> well well um good understanding of of how you um of the type of things music you like and of the melodies you like um this doesn't have to be um on a on a in a musical theory level but you know you can just feel it and it's good and then you do it that's it um, and on the other hand, if you haven't, if you don't have that, you know, if you haven't listened to enough music, and if you haven't, if you're not passionate about many things, and you, if you can't recreate that, and only know music theory, you will just create a hollow construct, which doesn't do a lot, you know, which is just, I don't know. So, I feel like music theory can can help to to. Uh, when you're writing a song, it can, really can help you to, to understand what you're doing and to, you know, build a solid foundation, but you don't need it, you know. And so, more often than not, I feel like if you've just spent lots of time writing music and making music without ever thinking about music theory, um, your music will probably become just as good as if you, uh, maybe even better than if you knew any theory. But really, again, it's it's the whole whole point of this, and that's what I'm, you know, that's my mantra. Um, you just have to do it. If you're doing it, it doesn't matter how you do it, uh, but in the end, you will create good music. And it doesn't matter if you if you use music music theory or not. Um, you know, if this is something you feel like that helps, it's good. But you don't need it. You definitely don't don't need it. Um, um, 
Nixon Scholar says, I've been doing it for around two years now, not quite full time, but I guess there will come a point where it will become more like work. Yeah, um, you know, I've been doing it for, don't let me lie, um, 14 years now, 15. Um, also not full time all the time, but you know, there were some, some times when I was like really working 12, 14 hours every day and also in these theater productions, it's a lot of work. Um, yeah, but hey, I, I hope you will. Uh, Mixon Scorer says, uh, are you a fan of Oasis? <laughs> They were huge in the 90s. Well, you know, uh, yeah, there were some songs I liked. There were some songs I, I actually liked. Um, <laughs> and hey, oh, I was, I don't know how old I was, but when when um, uh, Wonder Wall uh, came out, um, I think a couple of years later, I was able to play it on a guitar. And I was 15, so. Uh, when everybody was drunk and sitting around a uh, fire on the beach Yeah uh, But I don't know. Uh, I, I liked a couple of songs, but um, yeah. uh, Probably biggest band since Beatles in UK, but a lot of people don't like them um, Yeah I don't know there are there was I think still feel like there are a couple of songs that have a quality that is um, very special or was very special at the time. So. Uh, Carrots, yeah, I remember they were massive, but when they went to the US, they didn't uh, get noticed much. That's possible. I, I have no idea. Honestly, I know Wonder Wall, and there is a couple of other songs, but yeah, that's it basically. You know what? Let us record something today. Um, I think what will what I'll do now is. Uh, record this A part Yeah, you know what that, that's what we'll do I record this a part Oh, and first of all we have to record a little Piano loop I think Okay Now let us do this uh, I'm wondering how we'll how to do this best Oh, how best to do this? What's what's the correct what's the correct English? Uh, wait, let's insert some time here. Okay. Okay, and we'll just so add some of these noise things. So we have this beautiful background crackle stuff going on. Okay. Um, then there is this here. This pad. I think that that was just an, an ambient. Um, some kind of mood loop, I think. Let's make the crackle a little bit quieter. Okay, um, and you know what? Let's just record some variations of the A part and see what happens. Okay, I will arm the track now and then we start. Wait, let's change the view for that. No. Hey, we could also um, have the mobile camera so you can actually see what I'm playing. That would be right. That would would be nice, I think. Let's hope this works. Um. No, 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 no. Now, yes, it works. Okay, wait a second. Okay, 
no. It's a little complex here, but this should be alright. Okay. Yes, that looks good. Okay. Alright people, let's let's do this. Let's do it. Okay, um, now that was, okay, no, this view, um, I think the second version was the best, but I'm not sure, mm, nope, let's add this, okay, and let's also add this here. So there might be some slight um, delay here, or some slight, um, what is it called? Ah! No, it's fine. Yeah, it just wasn't playing really good. Okay, and <laughs> it took a couple of takes until I... Okay. These probably are the takes that are okay. I think there were four, yeah. So these are the four takes of the first A part. They are all a little bit different, um, but I felt like the second one was the best. Mm. 
Yeah, the, the end was really bad. At some point it's, it was okay. But, yeah. No. That's the second one. I think that was the best. That's not really on time. That's um, rushing a little bit. Oh, and it's shorter. Damn. And it's shorter, but maybe that's good. You know what? Now we can just you know play around, and build our build our track, like with Legos. Hey, and the panning is really off. Okay. Well, that's the way it is. And we can still correct it afterwards. Okay, that's I think that's a good good A part. Let's call this A2. Um I mean this here is also not bad, right? This is A1. It's just in the end there was really I was I really messed it up in the end. Yeah, this one. No no no. Okay, let's listen to the third one. Oh wait, let's cut it one beat before it starts because it's kind of it kind of starts kind of too early, just a little bit. It's so hard to play on click. Yeah, that's a little bit like A1, just better. Okay, you know what? Okay, let's rename this. And was bad. Now this is just 17 seconds, you know, one one of these parts. So even if we This will be a short short piece, I think. Let's see. Maybe maybe it will be a little bit longer, but right now I'm not sure about this. Oh, and one thing I forgot. Totally forgot that. Um we recorded some loop material here at the beginning. Okay, let's duplicate that. Um, 28 to the right. Let's make one group here where we build a loop. And I think we can do this just like with the first one, uh, with the first track that we have this loop changing over time. Okay, so let's have several layers of these and just you know, use small loops out of this. So this here, um, let's loop this, and here let's loop. You know, we just randomly, <laughs> randomly choose, choose some stuff out of this without ever listening to it, at all. Because hey, maybe this works, right? <laughs> and let's do another one. Let's do four, and then we will also pen them. Weirdly. Or just not weirdly, but really, really wide. So almost all the way to the left, all the way to the right, and a little bit more centric left, right. Okay. Well, this kind of feels like it's not. <laughs> uh, I wonder why. Um, kind of feels like it's not on in sync. Okay, now this. I mean, the interesting part is that it is. You know, the, you you hear the different phrases um, phasing. 
That's kind of interesting. Okay, we just I will just, you know, correct the loops so that there are at least one eighth um, so, um quantized to one eighth of the length. Okay, but I think that's fine. Now, one thing I would like to try is what happens when we just use repitch and what? No, go back, 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 back. Okay. <clears throat> ah, no. All the I, what I was just about to do was to um, you know, just to um, take all of them and double their length. But I think I would have to do this manually with every clip because they are all different length. I mean, I like this sound. But I'm not sure if this really mixes well with the... with this here. Well, I don't know. Let's make um, let's make a second version of this loop, which is plus twelve. So just you know, double the speed. Uh, and also because we, you know, put the warp mode to repitch, it will now um, not only speed it up but also play it higher an octave. So this is our. I mean, it's an interesting color, I think. And then would come the, the B part. Uh, however, however it looks. Oh wait, that was wrong. Okay. Okay. Um, now what about the? Okay, I think we still need this pad here. And I will just set a marker here, so... Um, and you know what, I think I will take this here, the recording, put it here so that we have the track we're actually working at, uh, working on at the very beginning of the track. And all the material will be to the right of it. So... Not 100% sure about this. So. Hey, and where's. Oh, did I delete this? No. Yes, okay, I accidentally deleted all the beautiful noise thing here. Let's put it here, and now let's delete the time. Okay, delete time. Time deleted. Now, all these three elements together, like the noise the pad and the piano. This works okay, I think. Right. And then we could start introducing um, Mixing Scholar's drums. I'm just calling them Mixing Scholar's drums because it was his idea. Hey, why are they muted? <laughs> That's my daughter at the door again. Um, 
hey, you know what we could also do is let's see what happens when we just have this here. Just repeat this. Let's let's see. You, you were just messing around. And why not add some kick here? Well, there is something to it. There is something to it. Okay, let's listen from the beginning. Not sure about the kick drum, but yeah, this might work. Um, let's try another A part though, maybe A A four. not so tight this a part you know I've been pretty lax on the you know what's what's really crazy is that even though I don't like it, but I'm when I'm writing this right now, I'm thinking, okay, the first 30 seconds are really important because if people listen to this and they skip in the fir first 30 seconds, this will not count as a play on Spotify. <laughs> it's so weird, right? It shouldn't be that like that, but it's there in the back of my mind, uh, saying, hey, don't make them skip in the first 30 seconds. but okay well, I think this should start later on this chord here so we're at the major tonic and then maybe some doom doom boom boom It's not too bad. Okay, um, <clears throat> now I'm thinking maybe this is also fine when it And then we'll go into the B part, so or in any so, some kind of B part. Um, but I think it's a good idea to have these resting moments, you know, when there's not so much happening.
Okay, and let's start with the, you know, with, when, in Ableton, um, when you, when you're not careful, Ableton will automatically add fades to the beginning. So if you have any, you know, hard transients you want to add, um, they might have been faded away. Um, yeah, so you basically need to do this manually and just you know, remove the fade. Oh wait, this better. Yeah, I've played the chord two times. So I think better than just looping the last one. Okay, let's see what I had planned for the... I had planned something for the B part. I don't remember it anymore. Well, I like this version. Maybe we have to play some more variations on the A part. Yeah, this one was good. Ah, okay. This one was good. We also have to take a look at the original improvisation because I think there were also some interesting um, variations on this A theme. Yes. That's good. Also, this uh, rhythmic irregularity. Okay, let's do something similar to this. this part here. Maybe we need to do some, you know, there was a quote from an engineer on Reddit, I think, uh, who said that one of the best advices he ever got was if you're doing something and if you're working on something, get the foundation right. Because if that doesn't work, everything else will crumble. I mean, this... <laughs> And this is cr quite literally when you're building a house, of course, that's quite obvious. Um, but also if you're building some kind of software where, you know, the libraries and dependencies are not really well done, this will become a huge problem down the road. And the same with music. When you don't get, get, get the basis right, um, the whole thing will crumble and it will become so much more work to fix it. So, um... Now, because of that, um, I think I'll just do some more recordings of that A part. This is the now, I'm also thinking about starting to notate these uh, while I'm playing. Not sure how I will be able to show you what I'm writing. Um, yeah, but I feel like with the last two tracks we made here, I think this will still be more of an improvisational um, method, but the next one will be more, you know, I will actually have pen and paper and write some sheet note, because it's easier. It's, it's a lot easier to make complex things and remember them. That one is really nice. Oh, you know what? You know what? I'll just 
maybe I'll write this down. At least the end. Or maybe I will do it now. Maybe I will do it in Dorico. I think this might take too much time, actually. I'll just play it along on, on my Rev 2, which will be beautiful. No, it won't. It's actually pretty simple. But there was this the one one more note. It's just one eighth before the new melody. Okay, this should be possible now. And the end is. Okay, once more. Is this so hard to play? Something like this. Okay. You know what? Let's just record some more. And I will give this a different color now. I'll loop this and let's say this will be dark green. Okay. Let's record some more. And we need a click. Wait. Click.
think the first A parts, you know, I was just trying to record the B part as well, um, but I think the first two A parts were pretty okay. Um, okay, let's have a listen. so decisive right I knew that I wanted to play something there and wasn't sure what I'm doing and you can hear that oh I can hear that <laughs> okay let's call this a5 yeah and uh, this last one is better it's more confident you know one of the C parts we found yesterday. I mean, something like this, you know, it's not... That's, again, that's one thing I like about not writing it down. Because it's not... not fixed, you know. Although this leaves a lot of room for um, not finding what you originally did and, you know, brings all sorts of different problems with it, but it also... this... Um, yeah, there's the possibility of just it's still like a liquid you know it's just floating around it's changing all the time a little bit mm. and that's also a good thing I think This is too long. This is def definitely too long. Um, so maybe at this point there should be whoops, a C part coming in. Mm. I kind of like this. takes on this but this one is let's call this c1 and it's okay it's okay it's not great uh, well, let's put it here okay Let's record some more of the C part. keys rattling in the background so that's not the best background 
and what, what I liked about this uh, last one was when it went to that high E flat. This one. Ah, it's an F. Basically, a B. Uh, B B major chord arpeggiated. Yeah, that's when I stopped. I like this. That's that's a little surprise. Sounds really, really crap on that synthesizer, but beautiful on that piano. Just trying to figure out. Yeah, I think this this song is all about, or this um, piece is all about grace notes. Try record again, try recording again. Okay, um, now this was okay, I think. I'm really not sure about, really not sure about the transition, you know, going from that B part. I like these uh, grace notes. Um, and it, it's lagging a little bit. And the 
this major cork there. Not sure about this. Yeah, okay. Um. Hmm, that's difficult. Uh, right, let's put this at 4 dB and pan it to the right so we can have this crossfade here. Yes, this is the new loop now, the new kick drum loop. Bam, bam. Let's select all. Oh wait, can't we just? Yes, okay, now it should be possible to loop it. Yes, and now we can just loop it, perfect. major chord here is not really working doom, doom. and here as well please some kick drums doom. yeah here it should be double the tempo i mean not double the tempo but double the you know what i mean should appear twice as often I hope that makes sense. Okay, let's start from the beginning. just loop this part here where it's already okay no better idea let's listen from the beginning and see if that transition from a to b works because maybe it doesn't maybe it doesn't dragging and yeah I think this will be a very short piece because I don't see this developing a lot maybe maybe it will but I think I will just have to re-record this again. again. Uh, C2. Let's call this C2 and it goes here. And I think we will start the recording a little bit earlier, like here. Okay, and it will be done here. So let's try again. Oh. 
recording in the wrong channel. Whoa. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think I selected the wrong input and that was a feedback loop. A digital one. Even worse than the analog ones. Okay. Sorry. You know what? It's kind of fun to play to this beat. Um, what I would like to try is to use the um, kick drum that is a little bit different, the pattern, you know. Because I felt like this was a little less, um, a little less uh, obvious. Because what I wanted to do here is to have a little bit something that's a little bit more um, how, how do you call it less predictable maybe let's see if this works um, well it's still a little bit predictable Okay, now, I mean that's one and a half minutes, I think there will be a B part, uh, a C part, and maybe a D part, and that's it, and that's the piece. You know, right now I was, yesterday I was thinking about just giving this up and just letting this, I don't know, because I didn't like it too much. Um, and now I'm thinking, you know what, we'll finish this, we'll give this a C part and a D part and then an A part to play it out. Um, and if at the end of, of um, October, maybe, um, or end of November, we have lots of these little tracks, we can just choose the best and release these. And the other ones can be, you know, part of a giveaway or something like that. So maybe this won't make it, but, you know, it has a fighting chance. That's the idea. Boom. And I would like to have more random, random kick drums. Just at you know random intervals. There's a kick drum, and you're not sure. And just to distract from from that four four feeling. I'm just going to do that. I'll just move them around a little bit. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Maybe this is too much. Um, I don't know. Let's try it. And listen back.
Put that kick drum somewhere else. Maybe on this bone. And maybe here as well. And just to mark, you know. No, that's not good. Just to add some accents here and there. It's too lame. Bum, bum. And there it might have been good. Dum, bum. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is complete bullshit we're, we're creating here, but maybe not. here so that we know that this is A again. And let's rename this <coughs> so that we know this is the B part and let's mark the A part as well so that we always have orientation <coughs> of where we are on the track right now. Why not? Why not record a short take of this, right? <clears throat> uh, let's just record one, one little um, ref two bass. Let's call this ref two. Okay, and the input comes from the camper because all my synthesizers run through that. Um, yeah, let's just take the second A part and add some synthesizer. It's a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit difficult what I've played there because it's always changing slightly. So I will have to see if I can play this better. Um, flat F and then C again. Now let's try recording this again. Okay. 
Okay, um, I just changed the sound a little bit to have some sub octave, but I think that doesn't really add anything. <clears throat> so I'll just remove it and record it again. Last recording, I promise. The beginning was okay. Now we can do this better. Just the end part, that was bad. So, okay, we can punch in. Okay, that's enough. Enough Rev2 for today, I think. So just just a little bit added, uh, some added bass for that n new A part. I don't like this. This is so off grid here. Now you see, oh man, this is really like almost. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's very off. Okay, you know what? I'll try to correct this. This might be hard, but maybe I can manage. Then would be here would be a C part. Wait. And oh, how does the C part go? Wait, no, 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 no. Stop everything. Okay, I'm I'm a little bit afraid we don't have time to record the C part again. Um, but we'll do this on the next stream. Uh, so the next stream will be this Saturday. It's the 1st of August. Welcome August. Uh, 1st of August, this Saturday at 10 a.m. Central European time. So again, um, next stream will be this Saturday, uh, the 1st of August of July. The 1st of August, <laughs> uh, 10 p.m. But yeah, I feel like we actually... Oh yeah, this one... I like this part. I like the C part. Okay, but this is something we'll do. Um, we'll do next time. And I'm feeling it might be a good idea to, you know, just start the stream with, um, you know, just some talking. You know, that we can because I feel like I can either be really productive like this here, which, you know. Many people won't find this very interesting, but um, and there are uh, or either I can um, no, just concentrate on talking to you and and um, yeah, 
discussing all sorts of different music related things um, so I'm feeling maybe I will start the stream on Saturday like this so that we just uh, talk a little in the beginning uh, like like we did today just a little bit more planned out um, yeah and then we'll continue or yeah then we'll continue working on this now I feel like this will be another like two minutes two minute track just a you know, short snippet so maybe we'll do another C part then an A part and then maybe another D part and an A part so then it's like three minutes something like this I think and another thing I would like to try is to just use less um, just less no less notes I always feel like I have to put in lots of notes for things to become interesting which very often just isn't the case you know, it can be quite often it's it's better if there are less notes there oh man yeah this oh wait we'll have to we can we can fix this in two minutes maybe we can fix this in two minutes let's see now how it should be I think we need to use the time stretching feature here. Now how it should be is diddy bell or diddy down. Okay, it can be without the grace notes, but not like this. This is neither grace note nor is it in 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 sixteenth. So yeah, we'll have to fix this. Let's see if we just move it here. If this fixes the problem. Yes! Hey, that was... Oh man, Ableton, thank you. I like you. Fixed the problem in about half a second. Okay, that was easier than I thought. Right. Yeah, like I said, uh, next stream will be on... Saturday, 1st of August, uh, so this Saturday um, at 10 a.m. Central European time. Then we will continue working on this here. And I'm really happy with this little synthesizer bass support. Um, yeah, and then we'll work on this here, chat a little, and yeah, I'm really happy to see you there. Um, again, thanks to everybody who, have, who has been there, uh, there here. Um, Cal, I think you were the first one. Uh, Mixing Scholar, Mystical Physics, um, and all you beautiful people who uh, have been watching and not commenting, which is totally fine, by the way. Um, yeah, it's been a pleasure again, like always. Um, and I'll just repeat it once more. Um, next stream saturday 1st of august 10 a.m central european time we will continue working on this and maybe chat a little about all things music related um i'm really happy to see you there i'm really happy that you have been here and maybe enjoyed the stream um by the way if you liked any of the content you've just seen uh, and want to support me a little bit because usually these streams get like 13 views or something so it's really not too much if you would like to support me a little bit hit that like button uh, you wouldn't believe how much this helps with the youtube algorithm um yeah thank you everybody and see you on saturday see you soon <laughs>